Fuck me, this weekend was fucking torture. Thank God it's finally over after after all that shit. So, let's talk about this race weekend that went a lot longer than we anticipated. So, first race we had this weekend was the Xfinity race. A lot of action happened in it. A lot, a lot of chase drivers ended up in wrecks late. It was a very interesting race. That really impacted the chase bubble and the Xfinity chase. In the closing laps, though, Noah Gregson, he'd have the lead late in the race, but Harrison Byrne was catching him quick. And then on the last lap, just when you think Noah Gregson had the race won, Harrison Byrne goes underneath him in turn three and four and says, Hold my nuggets. Suck my dick. And then Harrison Byrne would pass Noah Gregson clean on the last turn of the last lap to steal the win. And if Noah Gregson won that race, he would have been in to the final four. But that is not the case. Nobody moves on to the round of four this week for Xfinity. Only driver safe Henry Martinsville is Chase Briscoe. And Briscoe had a bit of an up and down day. But yeah, at least it can't get any worse for Briscoe, right? Fucking hell! Another goddamn miscarriage this year? Jesus Christ. Fuck, that's gotta suck. No, serious is no my prayers um to Chase Briscoe and his wife. That's that that's bad. That's terrible, man. Two miscarriages in one year. Can twenty twenty please just go fucking die in a hole already? God damn this year has been terrible. Next up we head to the F one race in Portugal. First time in over twenty years there's an F one race in Portugal. The first lap was very interesting. Because, well, where did Carl side start? Didn't he start, like, fucking 7th or 8th? And in the opening lab, he went from, like, 7th to the lead in the first lab of the race. Out of nowhere. What the hell? But, man, that's crazy. But then it wasn't too, it didn't last too long as then Mercedes won and Dick punched the field back to reality. Bottas, like, dominated the first half of the race until Lewis Hamilton decided it was hammer time. And then passed Bottas around the halfway point race. And once Lewis took the lead, Lewis never looked back. So Lewis Hamilton wins again. And this win would be win number 92. Which means Lewis Hamilton has now passed Michael Schumacher. For most career wins in Formula 1 all time. So it's a new world record. So now Lewis Hamilton is all alone on the mountaintop. Hey, congrats to Lewis Hamilton. He deserves the milestone. Very well deserved. I know it's that the F1 boomers are having a complete meltdown over it. And all I say to the F1 boomers is, hey, if you think that's bad... Just wait until Lewis Hamilton wins his seventh championship in a couple races. Since with five races to go, Lewis Hamilton has a three race points lead. Like, Lewis pretty much has this championship on ice. It'll take a major collapse for Lewis to blow it. And in terms of the eliminator list, uh, really no one got eliminated this week, but there's only three drivers mathematically Still eligible for the championship. The last two that haven't been eliminated this year are Bottas and Verstappen. Everybody else from Ricardo on down have all been mathematically eliminated. In terms of the Constructors, everybody except for Red Bull have been eliminated from the Constructors race. Red Bull is the only team that possibly has a chance at Mercedes. But for the San Marino Grand Prix next weekend for F1... Mercedes does enter that race with a chance to lock up the Constructors' Championship. All Mercedes has to do is not lose 30 points to um, Red Bull at San Marino. And Mercedes will lock up, I believe, will be their 7th consecutive Constructors' Championship. Jesus Christ. So yeah, Mercedes, so yeah. 
Only five more races left for F1 this season. And pretty much Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes have the World Drivers and Constructor Championships on ice, respectively. Anyway, let's move on, though. Next race, we're going to talk about the truck race. Some interesting stuff happened. A couple of drivers took some hits in the points. And, of course, the big controversy happened between Ben Rhodes and Christian Eckes. Where Ben Rhodes would get loose while battling Christian Eckes for position. And then Ben Rhodes then claimed that Eckes raced him dirty. Which he didn't, and then said that Eckes forced him up the track. Which Eckes didn't. Eckes didn't even touch Ben Rhodes. And then Ben Rhodes claimed that he was forced into the wall. And, uh, no, Ben Rhodes, you never touched the wall in that incident, you dumbass. So then, what does Ben Rhodes decide to do about that? How about be a sore loser and dump Christian Eckes for no reason? Well, Ben Rhodes, you really went that low. And then in the post-race interview after Ben Rhodes wrecks on the last lab, Ben Rhodes doesn't even have the balls to man up and take responsibility for his actions. He instead goes on and calls all the KBM, dr KBM drivers dirty. And utter stupid shit and saying that... They don't race with respect. Look who's fucking talking. Yes, because it's never Ben Rhodes' fault. It's always someone else's. Ben, where is your fucking professionalism? Seriously. Like, goddamn. Like, Ben Rhodes... He's a complete piece of shit. Like, he can't even take responsibility for his own actions. Don't get it any lower than that. But yeah, and all roads, by the way, you may have fucked up big time with that. Because after the race, well, be lucky that Eckes gave you a double middle finger salute. I'm honestly surprised he didn't throw his helmet at your truck. Or his Hans device, or both. And oh, by the way, Eckes has already asked Matt Kenseth for any pointers since the next truck race is Martinsville. So this is going to get interesting. Because y'all remember what happened with Kenseth and Wagano at Martinsville back in 2015. All I say to Eckes is, I hope you have no, I hope you have no plans for Phoenix. Because if you decide to pull a Kenseth 2015... There's a good chance you're getting suspended for it. Just keep this in mind, Rhodes. You're still in the chase. Eckes isn't. You have everything to lose next weekend at Martinsville. Christian Eckes has absolutely nothing to lose. No, by the way, Rhodes, you're also entering in a must-win scenario. Good luck. You're going to need all the luck in the world if you're going to have a chance in hell of going to the Final Four. We got a truck series. There's going to be three drivers in a must-win scenario. So yeah, we'll get to the points though at the end of the video. Now to the cup race. The cup race was interesting. So, Sunday. We get only 52 laps and Harvick would actually end up in the wall while leading the race. A couple things happened. And then mist came, which turned into rain. Race postponed until Monday morning. Monday morning rolls around. We still have rain. And then after waiting like almost eight hours, eight, nine hours, race is then postponed till Tuesday afternoon. Let me put this in perspective for Monday. Monday, I went to work for eight hours, made bank, missed nothing. I even went to the gym for two hours to work out and missed nothing. Hell, I didn't even get the news that they were postponing the race till Tuesday until I was in the drive through line for KFC. Still missed nothing. At least I got a good workout in still. So then Tuesday comes, 
that it's still raining. They did make an honest effort to dry the track, but when they almost got it complete, it rained again and NASCAR said, fuck this, we'll try it Wednesday afternoon. And oh, by the way, Tuesday, of course, you guessed it. Worked eight hours, went to work for eight hours, made bank again, missed nothing. I even got to record other videos for other content I do on my channel. Miss nothing. Good to know. So, of course, on Wednesday afternoon, the race start would be delayed because of rain and drying the track. The race wouldn't get started until around 5 o'clock. And when the race got going... It really, not much really happened. Nothing memorable really happened. It was just, you know, normal fucking Texas racing. Like, this race was fucking shit. Like, if we're gonna wait this long for a race, at least make it memorable. Like, really nothing happened. Like, it ended up being a fuel mileage race at the end, which made it a little interesting, but not much really happened. Now, I believe that, I believe this race also may have set the longest red flag delay in NASCAR history. A red flag of just over 72 hours. Jesus fucking Christ, fuck me in the ass with no Vaseline, please. But of course, um, I think this race, Mother Nature was really hell bent on this race. Because I think she it was I think she was trying to make sure a certain driver didn't win this race. And it didn't occur to me until Wednesday afternoon. I was like, wait a minute. Is Mother Nature doing everything in her power to make sure this race doesn't happen so Kyle Busch doesn't win? And then today, what do you know? Kyle Busch's fuel tank lives on and Kyle Busch gets his first win of the season. Only took you 34 races to get in the W Club. What took you so long? But yeah, Kyle, see what happens when you don't bitch up a storm on social media and focus on your race cars? Maybe if you did this all fucking year, you would actually still have a chance. You would actually make it to the Final Four. Better luck next year, though. But folks, if you're expecting me to, you know, rage about Kyle Busch's win and get pissed off and all that, I'm not going to do it today. It's just not worth it today. You know, I don't got the strength or the motivation. I don't, it's not worth it for me. Um, this race, honestly, Kyle Busch's win, this win is pretty meaningless to him anyway. It's a meaningless win. Like, it doesn't impact him in the championship whatsoever. He gains nothing and loses nothing with him being eliminated. Like, the only thing he does is really help him in his ground for the Eliminator Bowl. Like the wind's meaningless, Bush sexuals, you ain't getting you ain't got getting Kyle Bush back in the chase. You ain't getting no bullshit fucking champions provisional to get into the championship race. It ain't happening. So you know what? Fuck it. I don't really care. Only two more weeks left of this shit. Like I'm honestly just glad this fucking race was over so I don't have to fucking deal with another fucking twenty four hour red flag. Like like by the time this race was over. It felt like you've been watching it for five fucking months. It was fucking torture. Especially with that long red flag delay. Like, fuck me. Thank God there's only two more fucking races left this season so we can fucking forget this year. This has been a fucking for garbage year for racing as a whole. Like, fuck, this year's been terrible. Thank God, though, this was the last mile and a half race this year, so we don't have to see this shitty-ass package again. Like, fuck. Like, God damn, like, this package needs to go. Like, close racing does not equal exciting racing. Anybody that defends this garbage-ass package is not a real fan. Plain and simple. So, yeah, for the Bush sexuals, though, let's just fucking have, let them have their moment. It's the only win they're going to have this year. Because Kyle Busch isn't winning Martinsville. And he sure as hell isn't winning the Phoenix Championship race. So all I have to say to Bush Sexuals is. Go on. And enjoy your meaning and enjoy your meaningless cup win. Just know this. 
the real Kyle is coming back in 2021. And oh yeah, he's out for blood. Oh, you think we're talking about Kyle Larson signing here? No, no, no. We got a separate video for that. But in the meantime, though, we did have some NASCAR Silly Season news updates to go through. And so we got a lot to talk about. So, of course, then we had Daniel Suarez, who's going to a new team called Trackhouse Racing in the 99 Chevrolet. So, Suarez is once and again leaving the cesspool called Toyota Driver Development. And is going to Chevrolet Driver Development. Don't worry, it gets better here. So then also continuing on, uh, Matt Benedetto's future has also been updated. So for 2021, and it's going to be a complex one, Benedetto will stay in the 21 car for the Wood Brothers in 2021. Sendrick will run Xfinity in 2021. He'll also run a select number of cup races for the fourth Penske car in 2021. And then in 2022, Sendrick will replace Matt Benedetto in the 21 car at Wood Brothers. And, at, and, in tw and after 2021, Matt Benedetto will be a free agent. Whether Benedetto goes to the two car to replace Brad Keselowski or not, that is yet to be seen. We'll have to wait and see. So yeah, that's an interesting free agency look. And of course, um, one of the other big dominoes to fall was who would replace Clint Boyer in the 14 at Stuart Haas. To no surprise, it was Chase Briscoe. I mean, with the breakout season that Briscoe's had in Xfinity, Xfinity this year, he really deserves that ride. He earned it fair and square. So now Stuart Haas, so now Kevin Harvick will have a real teammate. To compete against him and push Harvick to his limits in 2021. Maybe now someone can actually compete with Harvick. So Harvick doesn't turn the entire team into his fucking punching bag. But yeah. Briscoe. So yeah. Congrats to Briscoe. Um, despite the miscarriage. Congrats though on making it to the Cup Series. But sad about the miscarriage. Thoughts and prayers with you and your wife. During this time. And also during Briscoe's announcement, Tony Stewart once again said controversial shit again. As Tony Stewart took continuous jabs at Toyota and their driver development. When Tony called it pretty much the equivalent of a cesspool. Where, where J Toyota just signs a bunch of 15, 16 year old kids with no real plans and no openings. And it just becomes one gigantic clusterfuck after another. I mean, he's not wrong. And I know a lot of the drivers in the Toyota development program have ended up going on to di having to go to Ford or Chevrolet teams to get opportunities. Tony even went, went one step further and said that the Toyota driver development program is killing careers instead of making careers. I mean, Tony's not wrong with this. But then again, are we surprised? Like, how many times? Are we surprised though Tony took a lot of heat for these comments? Like, when doesn't Tony Stewart say controversial shit? Like, how many times in the last 20 years has Tony Stewart went in the media and said a lot of controversial shit and taken a lot of heat for it? I honestly lost track after 10, man. <laughs> like, like, Tony Stewart gives zero fucks. He doesn't give a damn who he offends. If he has something on his mind, he will speak it. But yeah, that was pretty interesting from Tony Stewart there. Taking shots at Toyota Racing Development. So looks like we got the manufacturer's war coming in. Between Ford and Toyota. And now Chevrolet with Larson coming to Hendrick Motorsports. Which will be talked about in another video. But anyway, to everyone there... Thank you for playing. But this week, we're going to go to a race that actually has meaning this week. The IndyCar season finale at St. Petersburg. The championship between Scott Dixon and Joseph Newgard. For Newgard, it's very simple. You need either a win or to finish in the top five to have a shot at the championship. For Scott Dixon, it's very simple. A top ten finish or better... 
and you're officially the champion. You finish 11th or lower, then you're going to need Briss, then you're going to need New Garden to struggle to have a chance. So overall, this race was this race was easily the best race of the weekend by a long shot. You know, it was a very interesting race. A lot of shit happened. There were a lot of drivers choking. Like, Will Power had issues in the race. Alexander Rossi crashed while leading the race. Like, hell, even Colton Herta overshot a corner and had spun out while leading, too. And all that madness, though, Joseph Newgarn would be in the right place at the right time. Newgarn would get the race win. Now, we wait. As would this win be enough for Newgarn to dethrone Scott Dixon in the championship lead? It wouldn't. Scott Dixon would end up finishing third, getting the final spot on the podium. And that third place finish would be enough for Scott Dixon to lock up his sixth IndyCar championship. So Scott Dixon avoids a, a massive choke job. Thank God. I thank God I didn't want to have to roast the shit out of Dixon for it. But congrats to Scott Dixon on his sixth championship. Well deserved. So Scott Dixon, while you continue your celebrations, there's one more thing you need to do. Scott, for the sixth time in your career and for the fourth time in eight years as you add to your impressive dynasty in IndyCar in the 2010s and now the early 2020s. But yeah, for the sixth time in your career and the fourth time in eight years, Scott Dixon, you get to take out your Metro card and you can hop your ass right on aboard the W train. It isn't the L train for once. What a shock. So yeah, the IndyCar season is officially over. Next time we'll be back with IndyCar, we'll be back in March at St. Petersburg. As long as the season doesn't have a postponed start again. Please, for the love of God, I better start on time or so help me. But yeah, anyway, um, I'm not going to bash um, Joseph Newgarn too much, considering that um, where that the amount he, that he this that he almost pulled it off, he just fell a couple spots short. Like New Garden almost did it, but he just fell short. So, hey, keep your head up, New Garden. You'll be back here next year. Like you're gonna be a championship contender for years to come. You already had two titles already in the last four years. So keep your head up and just work harder next year, New Garden. But yeah. Anyway, let's take a look at the cut points real quick. So real quick, let's take a look at the truck points entering the cutoff weekend, Eliminator weekend at Martinsville. So we got Austin Hill, 27 points above the cutoff line. He looks pretty safe right now. Um, it will take pretty much a lot of mistakes for him to miss out or someone below the line and winning in. But Austin Hill, he looks pretty comfortable right now. And Saint Smith holds that fourth and final spot into the final four. As in the truck race, there are still two spots left up for grabs entering the Eliminator race at Martinsville. So of course, I'm Matt Crafton, twelve points below the cutoff line. Like Crafton needs to have a solid run and hope Saint Smith struggles a little bit to have a chance. Grant Enfinger, forty-two points behind. He's pretty much in a must-win scenario. Or he's going to need to gain a lot of stage points and have a really good run and hope St. Smith struggles. But other than that, Henfinger is in a must-win scenario. Ben Rhodes, 45 below. He's in a must-win scenario too, unless something happens to St. Smith. And just notice, Rhodes, you also got a giant target on your back in Chris, from Christian Eckes. Since Eckes is out for blood for what you did to him at Texas. And Tyler Ankrum, 79 points out of the cutoff line. The only way Ankrum moves on is with a win. He's in must win. It's either a win or hit the L train. And how fitting that there's a railway right beside Martinsville Speedway. So the eliminated drivers won't have to go far when hopping on the L train. And don't worry, Bush Sexuals. The L train is going to arrive on time next week. There will be no delays, so don't you worry. 
Now to the Xfinity points. So the only driver safe entering Martinsville is Chase Briscoe. So entering Martinsville, there's still three spots left in the championship four up for grabs. You know, Sendrick, he's 14 points above the cutoff line. He just needs to have a solid run, get some stage points, stay out of trouble, and he moves on. Oh, Geyer, he needs to have a solid run. He needs to get stage points, period. If he wants to have a shot at move, having a chance to compete for a championship. Uh, Justin Haley, he's four points above the cutoff line. He needs to have a solid run, no doubt. He just needs to stay close to, Brand to the Brandon Jones, who's four below the cutoff line. And Haley just needs to outpoint Brandon Jones in every aspect. <coughs> Brandon Jones four points out. He just needs to have a solid run and hope Haley or Old Guy or have issues or even Cindric. Chastain enters 15 points below the cutoff line. Chastain just needs a solid run and he needs someone above the cutoff line to struggle. Either that or a win. Of course, if you win, you're automatically locked in anyway because of the fucking winning you advanced thing. Uh, Noah Gregson, 24 points out. He can still he still can make it in on points. He needs to have a solid day and hope that Justin Haley or Justin Allgaier have issues at Martinsville, which could happen because we've seen how crazy Martinsville is in the past. And this is also the first Xfinity race ever in Martinsville, so this is going to be an interesting race. No gap, no lead, and no gap is safe. And, of course, Ryan Sieg, 43 points out. He's pretty much in a must-win scenario. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting cutoff race entering Xfinity for Martinsville, the inaugural Martinsville race. And that race is going to decide the championship four. Going to be interesting. And now to the cut points. So, the only driver safe entering Martinsville is Joey Logano. As Logano enters, yeah, see, yeah, Logano, of course, with his win at Kansas, he's the only driver locked in. So Kevin Harvick, 42 points above the cutoff line. He's pretty much locked in. He's pretty much safe on points. If Harvick gets, like, at least a few stage points, he's pretty much in mathematically. Um, Denny Hamlin, 27 above the cutoff line, and Keselowski's 25 above the cutoff line. Um, both of them are pretty safe on points. Like, the only way I could see him possibly falling out is if someone below the cutoff line wins, or if Kislowski and Hamlin have bad finishes, and then someone below the cutoff line has a good race. Um, Alex Bowman and Chase Elliott both enter 25 points below the cutoff line. Um, they either need they either need to win Martinsville, or both of them need to have solid run, or one of them need to have solid runs, and hope either Hamlin or Kislowski have issues and struggle at Martinsville. Martin Truex Jr., he's 36 points below the cutoff line. Truex Jr. is pretty much in a, a must-win scenario. I don't see Truex making up 36 points. Mainly the big dagger for him was when his um, rear spoiler failed pre-race inspection at Texas, and he took a 20-point penalty. Wait, let me put this in perspective. Without that 20-point penalty, Truex would be 16 points below the cutoff line, which would be more manageable. But... That, but the real spoiler have been having issues in inspection has now put Truex in a must-win scenario. And the good news for Truex is he's won the last three Martinsville races, so you can't count him out at yet. It's not over till it's over. And then you got Kurt Busch, 81 points below the cutoff line. Kurt Busch is in a must-win. The only way he can make it to the Final Four is if he wins. If for him, it's simple. Win or hit the L train. Conveniently placed right beside the speedway. So yeah, next week, who will compete for the championship next week? And who will be sent to Elimination Station? Gonna be an interesting race. However, though, before we wrap this video up, we must talk with Joseph Newgarden. Now, Newgarden, despite your best efforts to come to almost pull off an improbable comeback in the, in, in the IndyCar Championship, it doesn't change the fact that you still have to take out your Metro card and get your ass right aboard the L train. But your ride will be short-lived. As you have now arrived at Elimination Station. 
And for that, you're going somewhere different. You're going to join the rest of the IndyCar field in the same place. Because for your failures of pulling the championship off at St. Petersburg. Your failures of being consistent enough to beat Scott Dixon this year. Your failures of getting enough wins to beat Dixon in the title this year. Your failures of being going back to back and successfully defending your IndyCar crowd. And your failures at winning a third championship and get, having a dynasty locked up. Or having your dynasty delayed for at least another year. Consider your name written down in the death note. As your season has been absolutely deleted. There's only one thing left to do. Gotta write their names in the death note. Delete! Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete.